Hi, and welcome to Deep in the Bunker, where it is the time of year, it is the pear harvest. And this year is a very special year for me because it's the first year I'm going to be making pear cider using my Moorcroft tree. Yeah, really special tree. Highly astringent pears and absolutely perfect if you're making a single blend peri pear cider. So enough talk, let's get on and pick them. All right, now this is exactly what I want. The yellow the better, and the softer, of course, because those juices just want to be released. Mm. Yeah, even fruit that's um, what you consider overripe, no problem there. It's gonna be juice, and uh, it's got half the fermenting done for you if you want to keep with your wild yeast, okay? So let's go. Well, there we are, just over 10 liters in fruit. So I'm not expecting a massive uh, juice, but it'll be enough. Like I say, last year, I had a good sort of 20, 30 liters off that tree, but you don't get a consistent uh, crop every year. One year's big, one year's small, bumper and lean, etc. It just goes like that, nothing you do, but I say, ultra excited to get crushing. So with the smaller ones um, and the overripe ones, straight in there. You know, they are just gonna go, give that a little turn, and here it goes. Oh, that's mushy, horrible. <laughs> Badness. Uh, with large ones and more firm ones, uh, quite simply, cut in half, and once again, in there. Ooh, throw the bad ones away. Now there's a workout for your firearms, and no doubt. Right, so what we're gonna do with this, because it's Perry, excuse me. It's Perry pear cider and not apple cider. Uh, we've got to reduce the tannin levels. So for that end, I'm simply now gonna oxidize it. And that's um, leave it overnight, put a lid on it, and come back to 24 hours time. And welcome to 24 hours later, where it is time to press these pears into the juicer and sterilize them with Camden tablets. Open it up, and we've got a good old mix in there. So quite simply with that, all that juice, shovel it in to our juicer. All right, packing it into the top here, as far as we can go and give it a little press down. Yeah, just absolutely making it right up to the top and firm down, close the bag over and we'll go with the blocks. Couple of extra support blocks on top. Finally with the winder, place. And down to the press. Okay, so let's stick this up on the table and start juicing. In with the winder and stick it around. Look at that juice coming out already. Right, that's the maximum I'm going to get out of that. So let's just. Boom. <laughs> Drain out a little bit of froth and we'll repeat the 
process. I'm doing the nut here. Ooh, that is tight in. Wow, look how far that pressed down. All right, there we go. Not the largest of volume, uh, about a gallon, but a gallon I do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna completely sterilize now because I don't want to rely on natural yeast. So to that end, Captain tablets, or Captain tablets, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, one of these crushed up in here and left for 24 hours to kill the yeast, and then I'll introduce my controlled yeast, my champagne yeast, and we'll go from there. So here we are. Just the one. I'm sure I should be using a razor for this. It looks awful familiar, doesn't it? Alright, here we go, seriously. All joking aside, so that's one tablet all in there. Give that a quick stir with my sterilized utensil. And so now I'll just leave for another 24 hours. So I'll catch you tomorrow. Right, final part of the video of part one, of course. Uh, part two will be coming in about a month or so time. Well, right, so what we're gonna do, uh, just off screen, sterilized all my equipment. So one Demijohn, one bubbler, champagne, yeast, yeast nutrient, and of course some uh, pectolos. Okay. Right, the first job is to get that all in there. So let's clear ourselves space. Damage on in the middle. Start off with the pectolos, and this says one level teaspoon per gallon. In with that. Followed by the yeast nutrient, which is exact to say, one level teaspoon per gallon. Looks a bit like sugar, doesn't it? Level, yay. And finally, the yeast, which is a champagne yeast, of course. Um, champagne cider yeast, yeah, from Young's. Now, of course, you can use a um, cider yeast, but I want a very high ABV. I am aiming for 8.5 or better because I'm a true alcoholic cider connoisseur. So uh, this is a five gram packet and that does 25 uh, liters slash five gallons. So I don't need anywhere near that. Um, once again, about a quarter of a teaspoon just there for a single demijohn. And let's reveal our cider. Well, not cider, just pear juice at this point. Ooh, that's lovely. Right, uh, one question I'm just gonna voice here that is in my own head was why not just have two yeasts? So I've got the champagne yeast here and a natural pear yeast. Uh, why kill off one in, in favor of the other? Um, and the answer is quite simple because I don't want them to compete. Um, I'll have two different flavors, they'll compete. A uh, bit of mishmash, hodgepodge, nasty. I don't want that whatsoever. So, having killed it off with a Camden tab yesterday, uh, we're now just gonna use the pure yeast as we've done. On that note, let's get siphoning. So I just need to get a little bit of height here. Oh, yeah. Yep, here. And let's go with this. In we go. Give us a squeeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And using this, um, yeah, here we go, perfect. Oh, come on. Uh, denotes having to suck through the tube and pressurize itself. So extra hygienic. Um, and that's fantastic because we don't want nasty little spit in our cider until we drink it. I don't think we're going to fill this stem John completely up. Maybe halfway, three quarters if we're lucky. But, um, you know, first time you're working with natural product, you got what you got. Well, that looks about the maximum we're going to get out of that one. Not too bad. Just over. Um, Two thirds, I don't know, uh, over half anyway, and it'll do. So what we'll do now is get my uh, bubbler, stick it in place, and once again, the water in here is in fact uh, sterilized water using my Camden tablet. So that'll be just fine. And because it's somewhere also, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just stick it under the stairs next to the hot water tank, and that's gonna keep it a lovely 20, 25 um, degrees, which this yeast is actually perfectly going to ferment at. 
But if I feel that the nights are going to get too cold, I'll simply get my heat belt out, wrap it round, and control temperature that way. If it's too hot uh, at the top, at the bottom, because it transfers heat there, I'll simply transfer it to the top and keep it at a lovely 20 degrees. I've got some temperature stickers somewhere. I'll stick them on side and obviously you control it perfectly. But uh, yeah, with a final swish to make sure the yeast, the yeast nutrient, and the uh, peclose is fully mixed up in there. We're ready to go. So on that note, I'm gonna catch you uh, in about a month's time. We'll see what progress this has made. <sighs> Until then, it's been Deep in the Bunker, saying take care, stay safe, stay sane, and uh, enjoy your alcohol.